Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colt and in this video we're going to be going over deduplication inside of Zoho CRM. So before we jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. And if it sparks any feedback, questions, or video requests, please leave those in the comments section down below as well, as we do try to read through each and every one of those on a weekly basis. So before we jump in, I'm just going to do a quick word from our sponsor, which is us over here at Zanata. So we have just recently rolled out a little plugin here for the CRM marketplace that will evaluate the general health of your CRM and give you regular updates. So it's checking everything from are you using all of the licenses you're paying for down to duplicated data, just like we're going to talk about today, as well as some other cases of things that are irregular, like missing addresses, deals past closing dates, overdue tasks, kind of just an overall health check for your platform. This is priced at just 10 bucks a month and includes a seven day free trial. So check it out and see if it is useful for you. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the tutorial. So I've set up in our sample account just a uh, demo list of leads here that we'll use for deduplication. So what we'll see is that we have two pairs. We have our first example, and then we have our second example. Um, main difference is the first example matches perfectly in every single field, um, whereas our second example has some differences. Now, the reason I set it up this way is that when we run the deduplication, each record will be sent down one of two paths. Path one is where it will go if every single field in that record matches perfectly, like our first example. Path number two is going to be if there are differences between any of the fields in those two records. That's going to go into a queue that we'll actually have to review each individual record and get them consolidated. This is one of the reasons that you want to manage your duplicates really tightly. And it's one of the drivers of why we rolled out that plugin in the first place is just that if you accumulate a lot of duplicates, it's going to be a lot of work to resolve that problem. So you want to catch this early and catch it often. How do we actually begin this process? So there are two ways to begin deduplication inside of CRM. One of the ways is within an individual record up here in the top right under the three dots, we can go to find and merge duplicates. Now, what this is going to do is essentially allow us to pick a handful of criteria that it will use to search the system for matching leads. So in this case, it's selected where any of these things happen to match what's in our record. I would probably trim this down a little bit. Maybe I'd go like if last name and or email matches, right? For me, I'd say more like an all in this case, which would cut it down just a little bit. And what you can see is if you go too broad with your criteria, you're going to find things that might not actually be a duplicate. Like if you put that last name as Smith, right? You might find a whole lot of Smiths in your system that don't need to be merged into this record. So this kind of option one, where we're doing it for one individual record at a time, what I would say is a lot more likely is that you're running it on a module level. So we're saying, hey, search all leads and find me all duplicates based on a set of criteria. So that's actually the way we're going to do it today. And we'll be able to see those two different paths that things can go down through that process. Similarly to as we're in the individual record, we'll go up to this little actions button in the top right and we'll go down to deduplicate leads. So again, now we're running this in bulk across the entirety of the module. What this is going to ask us is essentially which fields we want to use to deduplicate these leads. So things like email, phone number, company. One thing that's important here is this is going to be an and criteria. So all three of these need to match if we do it this way for it to run the deduplication. In our case, I'm just going to do it based on email. Again, the reason is, is that if anything is different between those records, I'm going to have the opportunity to review it anyways. So I'm not super worried about using a search just off of the email. So I'm going to go ahead and click find and merge duplicates. Again, here is Zoho telling us about the two paths. So either things are going to be auto merged where we're going to merge those duplicate records right away because every single field is the same. Or we're going to have to go through and resolve conflicts, which is basically going to output us a list of any leads where the email in our case is matching, but other data on that record is not. So 
I'm going to go ahead and click yes, proceed. Deduplication always takes just a little bit of time to run in the background. So I'm going to let that run and then we'll be right back. All right. So just like Martha Stewart, we are pulling it out of the oven completed here. In the bottom right, we can see the little pop up for deduplicate leads. This is what will happen when that process is done running. And we'll see that one lead was merged successfully, whereas a few duplicate leads with conflicts have been put into a list for us to review. One little thing that I'll note here is that if you don't want to do the result or resolution right away, go ahead and click this do it later button. It will essentially email you a link to get where you need to go to do the resolution. I'm going to click on resolve now. But what I also want to show you is back on this page. If I give a refresh, we'll see that our first example is just resolved. There's nothing else that we need to do at all because every single field was identical. Um, that's often going to happen if there's like an issue on an import, maybe you have like a, a problem with a lead form that's uh, duplicating leads, things might match perfectly, and then it will just be resolved. But I will say a lot of the times the majority of the data is going to go into this manual resolution queue. Again, I'll preach it one more time, then I'm done. This is something you want to manage early and manage often because the more leads you have, the more contacts, accounts, whatever it may be, the longer this list is going to get. So in our little baby example here, we just have the one, we're going to resolve it, we're going to feel great. In real systems, this number can be big, right? And it can be a big arduous process to go through and consolidate all of the data for the leads. So manage this early, manage this often. Now here, I've got my email and I'm going to go into viewing this lead. Now this is the page where we're going to make all of the decisions about what data is more correct or more relevant for us. So as we look down the page, what this is, is over on the left, this left-hand column, basically from the middle over, is going to be the outcome that we're going to have based on our choices on the right-hand side of the page. It's going to break it down into two columns. Um, if you have three records, that's the most you can merge at once. There will be three columns on the right-hand side, but in our case, we just have the two. What this is, is one record is being listed on the left. And one record is being listed over here on the right. Um, you can, up at the top, select all data from one record or the other. So if you knew, like, hey, this is the good one, right? Whatever is on this one is really useful. This is older, maybe not as relevant. This is from a web form submission from three years ago, and I don't really trust it anymore, right? So you can just select all fields from one record. Once you've done that, you can also then subselect from another one. Right. So what I normally do when I'm doing a deduplication is I pick a primary record first that I think is going to be better. And then I see if any individual fields need to be moved over so I can look at like the company and we've got Zanata Consulting LLC. OK, that's a better name. Right. Like that's what I would want to go on to an invoice or a purchase order um, rather than like the shorthand Zanata. We can also see we have some differences in the address where we could choose one or the other based on which we know to be accurate. So maybe in our case, we're like, hey, yeah, I've never heard of this address. Easy Street is always where we've sent our invoices or our purchase orders for these people. So we're going to keep it over there. Um, one thing I will highlight is that if you have data filled in in a field for one and not the other, you can go ahead and select that as well in this process. Now that we've gone through, checked our data on each side, we can take a look over here on the left-hand column and just make sure that everything looks right before we press that magic button. One important thing to note is that once you do this merge, it's pretty difficult to go back. So you want to be very ready to do this before you actually push it live. Now, there is one last thing that I do want to show as we're doing this merge. So let's jump back over to our records here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So one of the things you may be wondering is, well, this is all fine and well. We've selected our field data, but what about everything else, right? What if I have tasks connected to these records? What if I have like deals related to two different versions of the same contact? What's going to happen there? Um, well, the nice thing is when we're doing this deduplication function is that it will actually pull in all of the related uh, records to the resulting outcome of the deduplication. So here in our example, we have like example task one and example task two that are both been completed for these leads. And of course, like even if we happen to do them on two different versions of a duplicate, they did both happen for this person, right? So we do want to make sure that that data is going to carry across 
into the output of our merge. Let's go ahead and actually push through the merge and I'll show you that the CRM will do exactly that for you. So I've clicked this merge button. Again, it's gonna note that these related actions or related records are gonna be transferred to that uh, master lead. So we'll go ahead and click yes, merge records. Now we have no more conflicts in the system. If you had more, it would just be a list right here. You keep clicking resolve, keep going in, choosing the appropriate fields and getting them all lined up. So now, now that we're back into our leads list, we can see we just have the two leads remaining. And if we click into our second lead, we'll see that both of those tasks have been combined into the output lead. Again, this is gonna be the same for like activities, emails, if you had attachments, notes on either of these records, all of those are gonna blend into the output so that you're not gonna lose any data in this uh, merge process other than the unselected data from those fields. You will also be able to see in the timeline here that a lead was updated using the find and merge, right? So it kind of explains what happened here and you can line that up with any of the field values that you're curious about inside of that lead. So I know this is kind of a quicker tip video. We just had a few requests for it. So we thought we would get it up here for everybody. Um, as always, I really do hope that you found this video useful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So it really helps us out. Make sure that YouTube shows you videos like this that we make in the future. Also, please be sure to leave those comments down below if you have any feedback, questions, or video requests, as we do try to read through each and every one of those on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.